Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today I want to continue our intermediate videos with taking a secondary look at the basic pottery bowl. For those of you who are still in the beginner phases and you're looking for a video on just how to make a basic pottery bowl, I have made that video for you. I will post it down below, although this video is going to touch on a lot of aspects going forward from the beginner phases that we probably didn't touch on in that video. This is more of a functional video while making the most basic shape in ceramic artwork other than a cylinder, which is the basic bell curve pottery bowl. That being said, if you're watching this video, I assume that most of you already know how to center, open, and make a fairly basic bell curve standard pottery bowl. So that's what we're going to do right now. Ooh, ooh. When you first start making wheel throw functional wear out of clay, your main concentration, especially in the beginner phases, is to just make the shape. It's the main thing that you care about. Your teacher, or possibly someone you know, says, okay, it's time to learn to make a cup. All right, we made a cup, basically a cylinder. Okay, it's time you learn how to make a bowl. Okay, you made a bowl, it's a nice curve, but you're only interested, usually, in getting it off the wheel. I made the shape, I got it off the wheel, I turned it in as a grade, I'm good to go, we're good, all right? I completed the task. But in the intermediate phases, you're essentially learning how to make that form a bit more functional and pleasurable for the person that's going to handle it at a later time. This includes a couple of easy tweaks and tricks that I'm going to show you in today's video that makes it feel a bit better for the hands and makes it a bit more functional for the user. Your first tip is don't pull so thin. There's this strange want or need that once you learn to pull a cylinder, you learn to pull taller, you want to pull thinner, you want to pull a little bit better, you want to make sure that the clay is very even, and that's all nice and good. But when you start making functional wear, you want some stability, you want some endurance, and you want some heft to it in order to make sure that it feels good in the hands. Also, if you pull multiple times while making something that you're going to stretch out anyway, you're stretching that clay far beyond the point in which you want to anyway. Let's imagine you pull a really nice cylinder and it's very thin. Well, when you start stretching that clay, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner because you are stretching the clay body. So your first tip is just pull one good time. A standard bowl really just needs one good pull before you start stretching it. Otherwise, your clay body is going to be really thin, you're not going to have any heft, and it's going to feel too light in the hands. Your second tip is that you don't have to pull a perfectly straight cylinder. If you know the shape you're going for along the way of your pulling, you can just continue going to that shape as you pull your first cylinder. You see, this is already like a fourth on its way to being a bowl. Although I do see a lot of teachers teaching the methodology of you make a cylinder, perfectly straight cylinder, then you make shape. Make cylinder, make shape. Make cylinder, make shape. I'm already going to be making a bowl, so if you get a little bit wide, you need to get the mentality out of your head that it must be a perfectly straight cylinder before you start forming anything. If you're making a bowl, there's nothing wrong with making your clay body a little bit more wide as you're pulling into a bowl. Use your rib. Whether you have a metal rib or you just want to use some type of other straight edge, I prefer a metal rib because I can I bend it very it easily to a curve. Just... You can put this on the outside of your clay as you're curling your fingers in and pushing the clay body out to form a bowl. It makes it way easier to make a self-supporting curvature this way. You can also turn it around, go on the inside of the bowl, and do the same thing. I'll try and do both for you now. Whether you have a metal, plastic, or wooden rib, by turning that upside down and placing the curve on the inward curve of your bowl, you have made a nice, 
clean, perfect, self-supporting curvature. That curve is there to help you do this very thing. A bunch of other things as well, but this is the most basic thing that curve is used for on the rib. Potter tip. Personally, I like to add a little bit more flair and make it look a bit more inviting. And also, to be honest with you, it's very much easier to access the food if I take this lip over here and tilt it out just a tiny bit. It gives it a bit of style on top of being a bit less chippable. And it gives it a bit more of an open flare. This does a couple of things. Number one, if you plan on making multiples of these, this opening here makes it a small bit easier to stack. Let's say you get two bowls, they're both two pounds. If you have them curving inward like we had them just a second ago, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to stack these in the cupboard. It's gonna be a little bit less functional. But if you tilt this lip a tiny bit outward, just like I did now, it makes it far easier to stack them inside of cupboards or just stack them even when you put them in the bisque. It saves a lot more time, a lot more space, and makes them a tad bit more functional. The final tip I have to give you, and it's less of a tip and it's more of a plea. Please start doing this. Please, for the love of whoever you pray to, start doing this. I meet far too many functional ceramic artists that come fresh out of class that do not do this very vital, very easy to do step that makes their stuff way less chippable and way better to handle right out of the gate. And that is to compress your tip. That sounded yeah, wrong. Boy. The final thing that I want you to do is to get your sponge, get a chamois, get whatever have you, find the very tip of your piece. You can see that it's a tiny bit jagged right here. Curve your sponge, chamois, whatever have you, and compress the very top of your rim. And just push down a small bit. Don't push down too much or ruin the piece. But by doing this, it makes it way smoother. This does a couple of things. Number one, it makes sure that it doesn't chip as easy. Those little jagged pieces are going to chip off if they bump anything in your cupboard. Number two, it makes it far more pleasurable to eat and drink out of. You should be doing this to cups as well. And thirdly, this is a safety thing for a lot of people you might give this piece to or even sell this piece to in the future. These jagged edges, if you do not compress them down after you're done, will end up either breaking or cutting somebody given enough time. So almost all of my pieces, especially functional ones, are usually finished off by me getting a chamois, a sponge, I have a mud tool sponge here, and just compressing while arcing just like this. Trust me, this makes it a thousand times better to use. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I feel like a lot of these tips are pretty basic things, but this video was more geared towards beginners who just got out of the beginner class and are learning to handle their mediums of clay a little bit better. These are some tips that you might not have thought of before, and if you liked any of these tips and you want more content like this, remember to click all the YouTube buttons so that way um, YouTube doesn't hit me while you're gone, or that one nerd in the comments below who's like, <laughs> you forgot to mention this, but realistically, he that person can't watch more than 10 minutes of a video. His his attention span's not long enough. Like even, even if I mentioned that part of the video, he wouldn't watch it. He just wants to complain about something. You like that? You like how I was semi-professional all the way through the video and then at the end I end up calling that guy a nerd just at the very end right there? It might have been you even. It might have been you. You know what? Did you like it? Did you click the like button because of it? Did you find out that you have a new kink right there? You're like, oh man, I like being pottery shamed. I didn't know that.